On this episode of Transducer University, we're going to talk about the different types of transducers and where they're best used. You know, many times at boat shows and on our customer support lines, we talk with consumers that um, are looking to buy a transducer and they get confused on the types of transducers and what they're actually called. They're, they're calling it one word, but they really mean it something else uh, in our line. Airmar makes transducers for every type of hull out there and knowing the types of transducers we make would be very valuable and help you better understand what's right for your boat. Let's start with the most basic and that would be the transom mount transducer and as the name might suggest that affixes to the transom of the boat. It's often depth, speed and temperature so it's a triducer and those transducers are most likely to be used on smaller boats that have outboards or IOs and they work very well, they're economical and uh, once they're adjusted and they have clean water running over them, you'll get perfect performance out of those. Now let's move on to maybe a, a larger boat or something that has inboards and you'll hear the term through hull transducer. And what we mean at Airmar when we say a through hull transducer is actually just that. There's a hole drilled through the hull and there's either a stem or something that goes into the hull, but the face of the transducer itself sticks outside of the hull, often paired with a fairing block. And we'll do another episode on fairing blocks and, and where to use them. But the true through hull transducer is made with bronze housings or sometimes stainless steel housings. We even make plastic housings depending on the hull type. But through hull actually has a stem that goes through the hull. Now you'll also see through hull tilted element. These models are available in our single frequency chirp ready transducers or in single or dual frequency conventional transducers. And with those, they are low profile housings that stick below the bottom of the boat, are low drag and perform extremely well. The tilted element part is extremely helpful because if you've got a steep hull or a uh, dead rise that's significant on the hull of your boat, we can offset that dead rise with a tilted element. The element of the transducer actually is compensating for the dead rise and it shoots straight down so you're going to get great performance regardless of where it is uh, on that hull. How an in-hull transducer is affixed within the boat is on fiberglass boats only. The actual tank or housing is glued or fiberglassed onto the inside of the hull. The tank is then filled with a non-toxic antifreeze. The face of the transducer actually sits in the non-toxic antifreeze and the signal is transmitted through that liquid in a more efficient way than say if the transducer was just glued directly to the hull. Those are used predominantly on smaller boats that uh, have a difficult place to put say a through hull transducer or a transom mount. They're the perfect solution for when things are tight and you don't have the ability to drill a hole in the bottom of the boat. So next, let's talk about flush mounts and pocket mounts. Now those are two terms that can be used interchangeably. We hear them mentioned both ways and, and both are accurate. Today, boat builders and our Airmar certified installers are getting very, very good at finding the perfect spot on a hull and then actually creating a custom pocket out of fiberglass that the transducers can fit up into. They either sit flush or that fiberglass is actually built as a fairing for that transducer. Either way, those positions of the transducers are in the best places they can be and they get the best performance out of them at a full range of speed. So flush mount, pocket mount are two great choices for boats where you've got high performance needs, you've got a deep keel and you wanna put that transducer on the keel, pocket mount is the way to go. So lastly, let's talk about cavity mount or tank mount, you'll hear it. Those styles are where there's actually a tank built on the exterior of the hull of a boat and the transducer itself sits into that wet box or that tank on the outside of the hull. Obviously, it's on much larger vessels, but uh, it's fairly common and of course, Airmar makes styles of transducers for those as well. Let's talk about placement on hulls. Some rules never change, and with transducers, you always want to have 
clean or non-aerated water coming by the face of that transducer. You have to find that spot on the hull to get the best performance. So on a transom mount, you're gonna look over the transom while you're running and try and find that, that water that's coming out that doesn't have air on it. Things like water intakes and strakes that are ahead of the transducer or near the transducer are always going to cause bubbles near the transducer that can end up as noise on your fish finder screen. If you have noise on the fish finder screen, but it disappears when the boat is still, then you know you certainly have a transducer placement issue. Talk to the hull manufacturer of the boat you own. They'll know where the best spots are to put that transducer.